and to airbrush paint. Um, so the like the number one go-to brand that, that I find no matter what city we're in is Createx. And you can get Createx paint um, in different types. Let me see if I can find. So you can get transparent. Um, I don't know if that shows. You can get transparent paint. This orange is transparent, which means that it's already been watered down. So if you want more your money to go further, get opaque orange and you can water it down yourself to make transparent orange. Um, this is iridescent, so you can get iridescent and pearlized. The iridescent and pearlized paints are a little cloggier just because they have pearl essence powder in them, but you can also thin these acrylic paints with water. Then you can get opaque, which will actually cover up color. So if I have a pink unitard and I paint opaque white on it, the pink will start to disappear. Now, if I thin the white or use a transparent paint, and if I paint orange on my pink unitard, it's gonna tint the pink orange, the pink isn't going to go away. So if you're covering color, you need opaque, which is thicker. And if you're just using white, if you have white netting or a white leotard, you can use transparent because it's gonna flow a little bit better. So these three are all Createx brand. And this is another Createx product we use a lot too. This is called Transparent Base. You can also buy uh, from Createx textile medium. Um, but if you're buying Createx branded paints, they're already set up for textiles, so you don't need to add textile medium to it. But if I was using some acrylic paint in a pinch and trying to make it work for the airbrush, you probably have to thin it and add the textile medium. So, so these three are already good to go for fabric. But if your paint is a little cloggy and you want to thin it out, you can use this base. So this is transparent base. You can also get opaque base, but the opaque base is kind of like runny milk and, and it makes your color paler. Um, but what's cool with this transparent base is you can also use it to seal something you've painted or, or used other ways to get color on. You can use this as a top coat so you can hand paint within reason something and then airbrush this transparent base over it and then heat set it and seal it. And we're gonna look a little bit at heat setting too. So this is a way to water down um, the, 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 the paint. But when you use this base to water it down, you're not sacrificing the adhesion of the paint to the fabric. So this is slightly better to water it down with than just water, but just water also works. Another brand that I see sometimes is this Tester's Aztec, which is a little square bottle, and it has a rock in there so you can really shake out the clumps. And um, when you're working with all these, when you get the little crusty boogers around the lid, this is the time where you want to like actually get them and get them away because you don't want them falling into your airbrush paint. They will cause trouble later. And then Golden make some really nice airbrushed paints. Um, and they just call it uh, high flow, or sometimes there, there's another golden brand that's called low viscosity. So that just means it's waterier, right? Yeah, so lower the lower the viscosity, the more luck you're gonna have running it through the airbrush. And some of the, what's the other brand that's not golden, but it's just as nice? Liquitex. Liquitex. Uh, I was looking at our art store yesterday. Some of the Liquitex styles of paint have a number on it that lets you know whether the, the viscosity is high or low. Ask the people at the paint store or just buy airbrush paint. Um, this other one, which I've never seen until yesterday, this is Com Art Airbrush Spray. And they, at our Blick store, this brand had the most um, spread of colors. And then this brand, this Comart one, also had warm hue, dark hue, and gray transparent so that you can adjust the value or the warmness. I mean, I don't, Rachel might have more to say on that. No, they right. had a product where you could just warm up or cool down a paint, but it wasn't yellow or blue. 
that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So play with that stuff. Um, let's paint just a tiny little and bit. Dinoflowers. Di yes, there's another one that you can get from, um, what's the dye catalog? Dharma. Dharma. From Dharma Dye. I think you can get it other places, but it's like called, nice art. it's called Dynaflow. Is it Dyna or Dino? Dyna up with an A probably. Flow. And it's big containers of completely liquid paint that will just blast through. <laughs> and the other thing to think of is like the more liquid the paint is, like this I turned to water, the more liquid it is, the faster it's going to go through the airbrush and the quicker you're going to run out of paint also. So there's like a weird balance to be had. <laughs> And I'm lucky that I don't have to use a color wheel because Rachel works here. But they are handy. Like I make a new discovery every time. How do I use this? What, how do I <laughs> use the color wheel? So if you're if you're mixing colors, this what's cool about this color wheel is it's got this window here. So you can see what happens. Okay, here's a basic <laughs> one. If I add yellow to red, it shows I've added yellow to red, I get orange. But then you can flip on the back. And you can see the other, you can see the other, what is this? What would this be? You can find the different hues. And another thing yeah. that I think a lot of people don't realize with yeah. this wheel yeah. is if you follow, just on any wheel, the yeah. complementary color, when you're neutralizing a color, that's how you can create these other ones. weird tones. Like if you have something that's really bright and you want to tone down the red, you would add the opposite color, which is green. And then you get kind of like a neutralized. Yeah. Tell them another one. Twist it and tell them another one. I don't know what I twisted to, but so, so on, like nothing an, really. And if you don't want to get more advanced, have red and green, like a red violet. You can look at the color wheel to be sure the opposite is yellow green. So you mix to those kill two the opposites. Color. Yeah. Yeah. To you soften so or right. You yeah. want more of a natural looking. Yeah. Like a plum that's in nature instead of this color then you yep. add some green and it would be more neutralized is the word for it and then this wheel is also good it can create triads which are great color schemes to use for different things so you're just thinking outside the box more you know um and then if you want to get more advanced there's tetrads and all kinds of stuff that yeah. you can read about so these shapes in the middle are showing you what what across on the wheel can you link together to get something that the art world says is satisfying and they're right yeah they're <laughs> right they've sorted this out so this is super super handy and the other side of this wheel also shows you what adding black and white to stuff does like i'm surprised but most time you want um, to avoid adding, black and white you can no add white to stuff but when you add black to something you are making it just dirty looking with yeah paint, yeah I like if i look on all these I where, avoid it, where it adds the black it kind of starts like to make a muddy add color add black they're talking a tiny yeah bit. yeah <laughs> and when i mix paint i'm so terrible at it i end up with a gigantic container by the time yeah. i get the color because i'm i'm putting in way way too much okay let's paint it and then clean it and then paint some more um so i'm gonna turn on i'm gonna turn on my pump it's got two two a two cycle engine because it gives me a little more paint. Keep it on the floor. Keep it on the floor. <laughs> um, so first, first I've got nothing in here, so nothing's coming out when I push. I'm going to put in some of this blue because I know oh, that's why I have it. Um, because I know it's working well. The other thing too is like if you feel like a thing of airbrush paint has gone off, it you know, what do you mean? if if you have crud in there oh, and it's it always away. cruddy, <laughs> throw it away. You can buy little tiny filters, but it's for your it's amount of, for your amount of time to filter the little jar of paint. You'd wrap. You'd, so you're going to save money to just go buy a jar of paint. Um, so let me. So um, so yeah. So when I first push, oh, I pulled. Oh oh. So that's that's number one thing to figure out. So when I first pushed, I shouldn't have any color. And we're going to look at this more. There's a pin in the back that's controlling. There's a pin here that's closing the hole in the front. So when I first started here, it probably meant that my pin wasn't closed because I shouldn't have had any pin. It's all about troubleshooting. And the other thing I'm going to check is that my, that my little pin 
I've just taken off the cap and there's a little metal tip in here. And we're gonna look at that really close. I wanna make sure that my pin is closing my tip. Make sure your pin is actually closed in the tip. There we go. So now, now that I fixed that, I'm pulling the trigger and I'm not getting any paint. So the first time I pulled the trigger and got paint was a clue that something wasn't connected right. So now let's pull the trigger again. And now as I slide my finger back, I'll get more and more paint. So I can start really tiny and make little squiggles. Now if I pull my finger back, I'm getting more and more and more paint until where I can't move fast enough to avoid drips. So let me do that. I do that one more time, right? Um, Chavis's art notebook. My art notebook. <laughs> so, so, sm so if you want tiny little flowers, um, you've got to get close to what you're working on. Because if I'm trying to make a tiny flower back here, it's just going to spread out into nothing like that. But if I want to make little precise flowers, I don't need a ton of paint, right? I just need a little paint. See there, I even got a little too much. I just need a little bit of paint so that I can get really close, okay? The other cool thing that we'll look at here in a second on the airbrush is there's a little dial and they're all a little different so it's good to actually look at the book and then youtube has a lot YouTube. of manuals yeah. we find tons on youtube videos. yeah <laughs> so this one has a little dial in the front that i can twist that moves my trigger a little bit forward or a little bit backward and what that does is it stops you from getting too much paint like if you're just getting blobs play with how much paint it's letting the gun suck in but that's kind of the basics there pull back and you get more paint right okay does anybody have questions about like that basic idea um so if you're if you're wanting to color a skirt right and i want to ombre my skirt i'm going to start way back here like that and if i want my ombre to get darker and darker then i'm going to start to move in until I've until I've made my darker spot. My page is wrinkly, but but that's kind of the idea. It's misty. It's misty. I made fog. And it's snowing. You haven't turned blue yet? No. Rachel's got her apron on and I'm wearing a white shirt. Um <laughs> you wear your I forgot it. So does anybody have a question about just like that that's a dual action airbrush and that's that's what happens when you pull the trigger back. For those of you who asked about the color wheel, you can get them at Amazon or any oh, art supply. Amazon, yep. And there's even um, more elaborate color wheels that have like 32 wedges around them where it has like the in-between colors. And the Munsell color oh, charts. Say that again, Rachel. <laughs> Munsell. That's the one. <laughs> That's the real one. That's the real one. Okay, let me put my apron on. Because I don't want to gunk up my Disney shirt. Okay, let's- It's such a short Let's apron. clean, I know. <laughs> oh, let's, I just let's clean the airbrush out and then we're gonna do some more stuff. Cleaning the airbrush. This Everyone's is favorite. this is the main this is the main thing here. Is there a lot of overspray involved? Meaning, do you need to really protect clothes or things in the area? You know, like if you look behind us, we threw a sheet over the table. If if you weren't doing this in your garage or a workroom, you want to protect stuff. Um, the gross and okay and not okay thing is someone has deemed this stuff not. Toxic. It's not the paints we're using aren't on the toxic scale. So if you inhale them, your body will just work them out. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> um, but you can definitely wear a mask. Well, you can wear like a dust mask. And the other thing that's really great is to get a box fan. Just take a regular old box fan and put a furnace filter on the suck side of the box fan and that will collect a lot of the particles before they go out into your room. But the downside of the box fan is if I'm near it painting, the, the, the suction from the fan, or if you're working in a studio that has a fume hood, will actually steer your paint away from where you're trying to paint because it's all about moving here. Yeah. Um, what size needle are you using? Good question. There, you can get three different, well, you can get more than three different sizes. We use the largest needle or the number three needle. 
And we'll look at that when I take, oh, I don't have a spare needle, so I'll take one out. Um, in the back here, there's old, you can get an ultra fine needle, a medium needle and a large needle with the Pache one. And we usually use the largest, because even with the largest needle, for costumes and stage, I can make a small enough line. If you use the ultra fine needle, you can get, I mean, it's frustrating. you can get, you can get really <laughs> tiny lines, but also remember the smaller your needle is, the smaller the tip is, the more likely you are to get a claw. So let's clean the airbrush, right? Okay. The first thing you want to do is dump out whatever excess paint is in your reservoir, whatever your reservoir is. So it looks like we've used all my blue, so I've got nothing to come out. You can try to save it. I, we usually just kind of eyeball the amount of paint we need to go to it. So I've got two, it's like working at a bar. I've got warm soapy water and then just warm water. What we um, like to do if I'm changing colors, often we're just like spraying a color for the day and not changing color so much, but if you're changing colors, it's a good idea. So I've completely submerged it underwater and I'm pulling the trigger and just letting some, some air, it's kind of fun with the bubbles. But you'll see that I still have a lot of blue coming out of there. That's because there's a lot of little tiny parts in here for the blue to get stuck under. So if I was going from blue paint to white paint, I'm gonna take, or blue to pink, I'm gonna clean it out just a little bit more. So the first thing to clean it, is I'm gonna take, there's a, a cover that covers the tip. So I'm gonna take that off, and I'm gonna take, there's a little teeny, I'm gonna take this tip off. Because look, you can see there's still a ton of paint on the needle and in that little cavern there. So before I even go to my good water, I'm gonna take the tip off. And I'm being careful not, I'm being careful not to jab the point of the needle. That's another thing we replace a lot is when the airbrush seems like it's not working, you need to clean it, clean it again, clean it well. And then if that doesn't do it, you probably need a new needle. So now that I've gotten most of the paint I can see out, I'm gonna come over to my cleaner water and, and not so much color is coming out. The other place when you're changing color where paint likes to hide is in the connection between the little reservoir or the little tank. If you're using the tank, you want to slide that reservoir off because there's a lip in there that's holding some paint too. So I want to get I want to get rid of all of that. What kind of soap are you using? Just dish soap. This is Meyer's dish soap. Um, but anything will work. So now let me clean it even more. That's like the kind of clean to change colors. That's like we're changing color. Or to pre-clean. Or to pre-clean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do, don't you? Yeah. Even after we've cleaned the airbrush, before we use it the first time, we go through like a monk-like ritualistic <laughs> cleaning, even in these little surgical trays to make sure um, that we've got it clean. Um, so at the art stores and online, you can get different sizes. I mean, it's like a bottle brush, but this set is for the airbrush. You need it. It's you gotta have this. A pipe cleaner works pretty good too, but I've seen um, where the pipe cleaner, if you like use the a pipe cleaner twice, the little things will come off. Then not only do you have paint in your airbrush, you have a little thread from the pipe cleaner. Plus you use all these yeah. different So types. these little steel ones um, are really, really, really great. And we use them a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is let's take this guy completely apart. Um, maybe do you want to zoom in a little and I'll do this on a piece of white. Would you ever use the Createx cleaning fluid or so? You know what? What's what that what we're going to get to here in a second is just isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This works way better than the Createx cleaning solution. It's way cheaper and you can get it at the pharmacy or the drugstore. Or the chemist, if you're in Australia. And where do you buy your airbrushes? Um, we we usually get them at Blick Art Supply Store, but you can get this one on Amazon. Okay? In my clothes, we can see all the different parts. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, 
Yeah, if you guys get cool. lost, there's tons of YouTube yeah. videos. Yeah, YouTube. I'm just here. Brands. I'm just here to like spark your confidence, <laughs> and then you fine tune this all. YouTube. It's not hard. Um, so you're gonna take off the tip. And what's funny, even with the Pache ones, not every time you buy the same one is the same. This one has a little like flow guide to, to you know, to make sure it's not overspraying too much. You can also take that off. So I've got, I've got the tip cover off. I've got the tip off. Then I'm going to go back here and take this back cover off. And there's, there's a little... Why is it stuck? Because I made it too tight. There is a little tiny um, uh, nut back here so that I can slide the pin out. So really, the pin can come all the way out either end. And that's the first thing. If it's not working, you don't have the pin in the right spot. So when you're putting your airbrush together, you want to put this little, the tip in. You put the tip in and then you slide the pin until you can actually see that it's there in the tip. This won't show on the webinar camera, but um, the pin needs to be all the way forward. So we've got the tip out, we've got the pin out. Then the first thing to do is to just get all these different parts wet. And you can put, um, you usually just soak the tips, right, in the alcohol? Yeah, Or do you like, it. yeah. <laughs> so you could get a smaller container and get all of this and actually put it in a bowl and leave you it in a see the paint leave it out. in a smaller bowl. Yeah, so I've got too big of a thing, but you can you can actually soak it all in alcohol overnight. Even I don't think would hurt. What I've it? done it. Yeah. Um, so, but so now that I've got some alcohol in there, I'm going to figure out which size of my and I'm I'm getting some alcohol on my brush. If the brush doesn't have any resistance, that one's a little too small. I'm going to try the next size up. The Iowata airbrushes, one thing, they're a different brand. I'm just not familiar with it, so we don't use it. That one fits better. They come with a set of brushes that are perfectly sized for their airbrush. If not, you can get just get this. Oh, there, there's glue coming off on there already, and we just rinsed it. And then there's even a little itty-bitty brush to get into the tip. So you can get down in there, and you just keep cleaning and cleaning. Oh, some yellow came out. That's from a different, that's a different day. So you scrub all these different parts. Now, that's kind of like the clean. So let me kind of put my pieces back in a row. That's the clean that's like good till we're going to use it again tomorrow or next week. But if your airbrush isn't working, you just keep taking it apart. And this is where YouTube and your phone is helpful to take pictures of what you've taken apart. Like you're not going to hurt it. So you can even take this thing off the back that holds a spring. Oh, I unscrewed the wrong thing. See, I undid the wrong thing, but I know that I can just screw it back together. You can take this back fixture off. There goes the trigger. We're really going to town. There. So you can get, so like we're even more dissected now than we were a second ago. You can take off. This is the little apparatus that's holding up another piece away. This is the part. There's you. This is what's pushing your trigger forward. That's what's pushing your trigger forward. And this kind of cannon shaped thing, that's what's holding the pin. So if it's still cruddy or not gliding or working, you just keep taking pieces off until you can figure out what's going on. And a new thing that I wanted to show you with the new Pasha brushes. Um, the trigger, see how it's a straight, the trigger is a straight pin, or you know, like it's a straight rod from the trigger, so it's easy to find where it fits back into this piston, or into this hole, right? The trigger has to fit down into that hole. Then you just scrub all those parts and put it back together. I dug out one of our old Pache airbrushes, because I want to show you, you might have this one, and it works great too, but... The trigger. Oh, I thought this one had the bent trigger. I grabbed the wrong one. There's there's a style of older Pache airbrush where the trigger, instead of having this pin, it has a hinge in it. And to get this hinge back down into the hole on the older ones is just an absolute nightmare. Um, so, but know that if your trigger falls out, you just put your trigger back in. Um, 
so that's there. So let's paint some more. Does anybody have questions about like the cleaning a little bit? No? We're good? Okay. Cleaning it, cleaning it, cleaning it. And then the other thing is like the tips and pins, we have a bunch of these airbrushes. They like to live together. So you'll see two of them. I'm going to put all of these pieces into one box and not let them mingle with somebody else's pieces. We'll save you a lot of figuring out. And somebody asked earlier about the different sizes. If you have different sizes of pins, the large pin won't work well with the small tip. You have to make sure that the tip matches the pin. Um, let's blast some color with the great big one first, just because yeah. that's fun. Um, You're not on camera. Oh, I was worried my phone was showing. <laughs> Um, so you can get different kinds of connections for all these. So this weird thing has all the same pieces as this one. When we when you take this large one apart, it's the same. It's the same thing going on on the inside. So this one has a quick connect. And let me do. Quick. Yeah. So what's cool with this one and um. Just like how I told you on the little one, there's a little nut. You can adjust how much paint you're getting. You can do the same thing with this one. You can close, you can close it so less paint is traveling into the gun. You can open it so more paint is traveling into the gun. And some of these big ones, you can change whether you have a vertical swath of paint or a horizontal swath of paint by changing this thing. So now I have paint running up and down in a band or paint running across in a band. So let me put some paint in on this. And this uses a lot of paint, so I'm gonna just dump a little bit right in the hole. Um, and this big one, you can use some pretty thick stuff. So this, this larger capacity gun, you can, you can use, um, you don't have to be as concerned about watering down the paint, okay? Let's blast some on this skirt. So we've got a skirt and a piece of lycra here that we're gonna paint on. Um, and this one is really good if you're painting a bunch of Maybe back up a little. I should back up a little bit. The dress. The dress. Like this way. Like yeah. Um, there. So watch out, Basil. I might overspray it. So this one's got more overspray, but you know, whatever's behind it will survive. Um So this one has got the same feature as the Pache one, that when I pull back a tiny bit, I'm not getting any paint. I've got to pull back more and more to get more paint. So if I wanted to ombre, I'm going to start quite a ways away and get a little bit of color on it. Does that show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit of color on it, and then I'm going to move in and start getting more and more color until I've got a really nice saturated thing going on. How pretty is that? So that's kind of like the rundown of this one. You can, you can airbrush pieces before they're put together. You can airbrush the underside of things. Like if I want the ombre to be more defined, I'm going to paint a few layers on the beach. And we generally aren't too flipped out about the fact that there's striations or that the fabric is folded. You know, like I have a fold here, so I have a piece of light coming all the way up on stage from a distance that's going to make your skirt look fuller. And actually, these skirts are left over from Little Dancer. We even dyed in some different stripes of color, really pale, but uh, to make it look really full from a distance. So the paint we're using too, this you could steam, or you, you could steam this after it, let it dry overnight. If you think that there's any chance that this is gonna get wet, there shouldn't be, you'd wanna steam this quite a bit or a couple times to just cure the paint, to make sure that the paint is really cured on there. If this isn't getting washed, if this isn't getting dry cleaned, if it's your waltz of the flower that you're going to use every single year, but you just shake it out and wash the bodice, don't worry about heat setting it because it's not going to come off. But if you've got paint flecking off 
it's probably too thick. And if you've got color running when it gets wet, it just means that you need to heat set it some. And this you could heat set with a steamer or you could, to whatever amount you can, open it up and press it with an iron. And it's not long. It, you, it, you just have to kind of warm it up a little bit. Let's spray a little of this on the line for just because. And I'm going to use a small airbrush some more too. But you can also start playing with all the fun things. So, right, we're going to make a, a fabulous beauty queen. What is she going to do? You use? love fashion. I love that. It's the year of the sash. Um, we got a lot of woodland creatures to do too that are going to have sash. Um, you can play with stencils too. So let me stencil just a little bit of this with a monster airbrush. Let's do that. And then let's paint some with a little airbrush. Caught red handed. <laughs> with some gloves. Um, how about red and blue? Let's just go full patriotic, right? <laughs> I bought pink and stuff, but I grabbed red and blue. I don't know why. Should I do pink? It's French. Blue. It's French. A very modern Plains Paris. So now I've got to turn my other motor on. Um, the other reason we have a few airbrushes is my butt show. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> is when one of them's giving you trouble and you're working on a project, the last thing you want to do is clean it. Fuss with it or clean it. You just grab another one and get to work. Um, so let's just put a little bit of blue on here. So you can obviously tell the difference between the last motor and this motor, the, or the last airbrush and compressor. So the first airbrush was on the Mondo air compressor, and now I'm on a small air compressor. So you can get the same coverage, it's just gonna take more time, right? And, and if I want darker, I'm just gonna overlap. I'm gonna go back over areas. And if I wanna fade, I just have to get further away from and slowly build up the fade there, right? But if you want to fit a, a defined edge, the closer you get is all right. And then you can, I mean, you could, if you're into leotards, you can do so much stuff with this because you can you can block in color, you can block in, I like squiggles, you know? You can do a whole lot. With just the airbrush. What PSI are you using for the little? This, the little one right now, one of them, the one with the gauge is at 45. Um, I'll switch colors here and put just a little bit more color on this. Okay. Ask a couple more questions and then we're going to do a few more, a couple more little things. Does this stiffen the lycra or and reduce the stretch? Not really. Um, if you're using the paint that's geared for fabric already or if you're using um, like if I was going to paint a white leotard and completely paint the whole thing, I'd probably use the Dynaflo, the Dynaflo paint that we were talking about, because it's the Dynaflo is a little more of like a fusion of paint and dye than it is paint where paint is pigments on top of the fibers. It's not necessarily changing the color of the fibers. Like the Dynaflo is some weird mixer. I'm just rinsing up my brush to change colors. Two orange, pink, green. Green. Let's put some green on. Beautiful. These. So a lot of these two have like two caps. It has a safety cap so that you don't spill. And and your sh um your shoes will get painted. No matter how careful you are, you're gonna spill a lot. At least I do. <laughs> um some of these brands, it's nice that it has the twist top so you can really control what's going in. And this one, since I didn't take a few of the little pieces off, I probably still have some blue in here. So if I'm uncertain, so now I have blue green, it's gonna take a little bit for my green to develop. There it comes. Okay. Now let's just put some green. You can get different size cords too. So like this, this hose right now is five feet. You can get 10. Um, so let's just put some leaves in here. We've done things where the entire unit are to airbrush. It's really cool. Palabalists used to airbrush all their unit are. They're really amazing. I haven't made something too booby. 
I'm not where are you going with this? I don't know. I don't have a plan, but I'm just drawing. The blueberry queen. This is the blueberry queen, right? Um, so now let's see what we did with us. It reminds me of pie too with the last. Oh the last, yes. So here's the blueberry. Here's the blueberry pie queen. Um, but cool effect. And the other thing too that you can do is you can just take regular lace. Um, you know, stuff stuff needs dimension usually. And that's one of the big differences between fashion and costuming is if I've got this white lace going on something and I want my white lace to look more luxurious, one thing you can do is beef up the lace um, by putting the sh putting shadow on it. Because if I put this pretty piece of white lace on my cream dress on stage, it's just going to be textured, right? Or put some color underneath the white if you want the lace to show. Another thing you can do is to put just a little bit of any color, really, but I'm going to do it with gray or black. If you come in and just pick a part of the lace, to put a little bit of a shadow on. Now that I've started, I know what I wish I'd done. <laughs> if you come in and just put a little bit of shadow in places, you can start to make this, this piece of lace actually pop from a distance. I worked in one shop where we would take Sharpies and, and outline parts of white lace so that, so that from a distance, there's just something going on with it. Does that show? That kind of shows. Yeah, so you can, you can be more strategic than I was, but, but on some stuff, it's surprising how putting just a little bit of shadow here and there actually makes it look a little more um, luxe. Okay, let's, let's heat set our piece of lycra, because that's good to do. Um, on our dress forms, when we're painting stuff, we use this um, plasti wrap that you use like when you're moving your house. We get great big rolls of this and you can just wrap. It's like saran wrap, but cheaper and sturdier. So we just wrap stuff up, wrap the dress forms really tight with this. And if you're, if you're pinning into your dress form and paint near the pin, somehow the pin acts like a wick and will suck the color to the dress form. Uh, through the plastic, so just don't paint wherever you stuck stuck up in. So with Lycra, we kind of assume that this is going to get washed. Our blueberry queen's top is going to get washed, probably not the skirt. So you want to heat set the top, which you can do with an iron. But if you want to get really technical, um, the Createx paint says the, there's different times on the different paints. One of the paints we're using today says to heat set it at 325 for 15 seconds. So you can do it with an iron, works totally fine. The other cool thing is you can get really cheap t-shirt presses now, and that's what we're gonna look at. Do you have to right use now. a special lycra to airbrush on? No, you can airbrush on, I've airbrushed on all sorts of lycra. The cotton works well, regular, like mill skin treco lycra works really well. And by stretching it a tiny little bit, we don't have, um, it's not fading when I stretch it because it was already kind of stretched on the dress form. You can paint lycra pieces flat on the table, pin them to a cardboard and paint them. Just know that you want to be a smidge darker probably or more intense because when the girl puts it on, it's going to lighten it up, okay? Um, it will work on slick stuff like like that vinyl-y shine, like the lycra that's like metallic, it won't stick to that. And you'll know right away, like if you're like, I don't think the paint sticks It'll to like this. It'll like beat up. Yeah, pick something else, either what you're going to battle with it the whole time. So we just have a t-shirt press here where you can control the temperature and the time. So I'm going to just lay the chunk of my lycra. So like, when when we would paint stuff at Houston Ballet, we did. There's a bunch of old ballets or like there's some Jerome Robin ones they're painted. There's lots of them. We would just base the side seams of leotards together with a straight stitch and stretch it so that we could put it on a dress form, paint it, dye shop would work on it, whatever. Then you can take the basting out and actually lay it flat to iron it or heat press. But this one, you just adjust your time up or down. 
and your temperature up or down, and it will just go, and it will yell at us when it's done. Um, but since we had the heat press out, we thought we would show you uh, another way to put on rhinestones. We have a rhinestone machine, which we're spoiled with and loved to death. But you can also get all sorts of, oh, there's my timer. So my piece of lycra, the color is set. And uh, you can get these Teflon sheets all sorts of places um, to make sure that uh, you're not putting the heating element right on the fabric. But um, this is just a side note, but it's fun. We have this huge collection of all different kinds of shapes and bangles and bobbles and stuff that are all heat set uh, with the heat set machine or by hand. Um, and you can also, if you look up heat proof transfer paper for rhinestones, you can get heat set rhinestones. And this paper has a, a, a film that can get heated. So Rachel made a quick two second snowflake on there. It's ugly. Yeah, it don't, don't judge us, this, we just threw this together. So you peel this film off and it holds your rhinestone motif on the film. Then on the blueberry princess top, I see how we got this. She's already been heat set, but we can heat her up again for her rhinestones. Or you can do it all at the same time. We're going to stick this film down on our blueberry queen and put the Teflon sheet back on there and cook it one more time. And that whole thing of rhinestones is going to be stuck on there all at once. You can also lift the lid and arrange a thing of rhinestones and then close the lid. Um, I'll look up tonight and see if I can find what they really call this stuff, because every time I order it, I have to Google like three or four things. Um, and the, uh, when we did Midsummer Night's Dream for Miami City Ballet, my dad was the heat setting guy, and he would fall asleep at this and have to wake him up. Every 15 seconds. Every 15 seconds. <laughs> but he wasn't confident in his artsy placement of little itty bitty rhinestones, so we took tag board, and we just punched with a screw punch, punched our pattern in the rhinestones so that he could lay down his piece of tutu netting or bodice piece, <coughs> lay the tag board on it, and then put the rhinestone in every hole, and then close it and just leave the tag board in there so it's like making sense. But now, our sticky piece will peel right off. Oh, it didn't go long enough. We gotta raise the temperature. But yeah, you guys, you, yeah, we didn't test this out. So it probably, the machine hasn't heated up long enough because I turned it on just as a pretend. But you heat that up, peel it off, and then your thing of rhinestone is there forever and ever. So let's take a few questions. But I think we may, mainly covered the, like, you can do this confidence level. Here's how it works. Clean it up. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Does anybody feel like their airbrush bravery or wanting to go get one and play with it has skyrocketed? I'm going to do it one more time. I think the rhinestones we have need to go up to 300. They're probably old. And this wow. is at 240 right now. Um, but what's cool is once you do your tests with the rhinestones, once you figure it out for that rhinestone, you can put thousands on. And the other thing to think about is if you have short rhinestones and thick rhinestones, right? You have to do a pass of your short rhinestones and then put your thick ones on and do that because if you have tall rhinestones and short rhinestones and clamp it down, it's only going to go down to the tall rhinestone. So you have to hook the short ones on and then work your way up. And if you bake them more than like three times, the back gets cracky. But you can bake them like two or three times pretty confident. Can I use an ordinary steam iron to set the fabric? Yes. So if you're just doing lycra and you don't have a t-shirt press like this, just steam it really, really good from both sides. But you may also want to steam it with um, a piece of muslin or something over the top so that you're not getting paint on your iron. Oh, they stuck. So, so this, we need to raise the temperature. But you can see we've stuck on our little snowflake thing. Her medal. Her medal. She's the, the, she's the winner of the blueberry, the blueberry pie, queen. pie queen contest. <laughs> this line will be for sale tomorrow. Do you ever airbrush dye? You know, it's too runny. Um, and the thing I find is it doesn't set as well for some reason because you don't have the heat when the dye goes on to something. 
When airbrushing on a silk bodice, would you thin your paint down or use it straight from the bottle? Test it. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately that's the answer for a lot of this stuff. Is you just have to make a sample and try it. So if your paint isn't coming, or if you want some of the silk to show through your paint, water it down a little bit. One thing yeah. with the bodices when I airbrush oh, yeah. them, I don't like to put water in because it'll seep into the cotille and stuff. Like I just use the paint and it you, sets on the top. Yeah, she wants just the pigment on top of the fabric but just test it. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you're gonna have weird dyed coatil on the inside. Um, will a garment steamer work also? Uh, yeah, use if you're gonna do this on a skirt, steam it. If you've got a flat piece of goods, just iron. But like this t-shirt press, we got off of Amazon for $95. And it works. It works really well. We've, We've used it a I'm lot. I'm surprised we haven't broken it. Uh, what brand is your airbrush again? These are Apache P A S C A two A's P A A S C H E E Apache dual action airbrush. Another really good brand is Iowata I something I Iowata. Um, and and I I've told a lot of people to. I just love these sparkles. Um, I've told a lot of people too to like. If you have an art store in your town, go ask the guy that knows about airbrushes and make him your friend. If I've used the dye to airbrush the edge of a tutu, is there a way to heat set that after? Just, yeah, if you use dye and it worked well, just steam it or press it separately with an iron if your layers aren't all hooked together yet. I think she meant if it's hooked together. If it's hooked together, just steam it. Um, another thing that, some hair dryers get yeah, really hot. another thing I was to say that they would do in Houston is hair dryers. <laughs> Any more questions? This recording should be available by Sunday, so if I don't send it out Sunday, it'll come on Monday. Oh, one more. Um, Shh, be quiet. Dogs. Come here. Uh, do you prefer spray on finished skirts or on the cut net? We do both. In fact, I was going to show you, um, we're making a couple woodland fairies for next week, fairies of the woodland glade. This ombre is just not even an ombre because we know that we're going to airbrush it. So Rachel dyed the flat goods kind of with some color. So right, this skirt is going to go from burgundy to ivory. So instead of relying on the airbrush, to, I don't know how well I pin this on. Instead of relying on the airbrush to put all the color on, she put some color on it to get it started. Then we're going to go in, open this up, not on a skirt, and we're going to airbrush a kind of a, you know, an organic quality over this and still leave the cream at the edge. So you can do it on here or not on here. And when you guys did the butterflies for Little Dancer, if anybody knows which costume I'm talking about, uh, they pinned the top layer of the skirts clear across a wooden fence and airbrushed feeling into each section of it in color to create what we wanted when it was gathered. So you can play with both before and after. And uh, Wendy Bow video? The what? The Wendy Bow video. Know, it's going to come this year. You're going to be <laughs> This <surprised>. year? <laughs> it's 2018 <laughs> Wendy Bow. Oh, God. I can show you a bow that Rick showed me this week. Let me show you that. Oh my God. It blew my mind. It's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. Is there a piece of ribbon more? <laughs> this take the last question while I get a piece of ribbon. There aren't any. There aren't any. Probably everybody knows this one already. This isn't a Wendy bow, but it changed my life. Just you know make how, the bow video. You know how when you want to make a tiny little bow? This can be a part of it. And you want the ears. No, I'm doing it right now. And you want the ears. <laughs> this is practice. No, I'm doing it. You want the ears of your bow to both point up, right? I want a bow. I'm going to, I'm going to, I used to tie this around the shirt. I want a bow. First, you just tie your thing. I have to watch. <laughs> then, it's you mirrored. fold both. You fold both, Al, you guys know this already. I just struggle with it. You fold both your loops. So I tied my middle knot. Then you fold both of your loops and make the letter H. This is the part I wasn't doing well. 
you make a little letter H, right, with two legs and a beam across the middle, then you just fold one ear around and behind the other. And when you pull it, one tail will flip over automatically. And then you have a bow that has everything in the bow that you're dreaming of. And then you can still adjust it like any other bow. Mm. But the ears are both up. That's it. How about that Wendy bow? Uh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Thank you. That'll keep you wanting more. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> I can't look at myself. It's too much fun. That's the first time you looked at the camera <laughs> for an hour. It's because it was a big screen today. I'm not Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> what? Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presents. <laughs> Doggies, you behave.